Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Lock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, happy Easter to you. Friends, today is the 100th episode of Season 2 here at God's Playbook. Triple digits in this season, exciting times. Today is Easter Monday, which begins the octave of Easter. Within the Easter season, these first octave, eight days of Easter, are extra special, where we truly focus on the tomb being empty and Christ being alive. This idea of him keeping true to his promise. I will destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. When we enter into this holy season of Easter, friends, every time we're at church, we're going to hear that the first reading that is used is from the Acts of the Apostles. This speaks of the Acts of the Apostles, as its name suggests, that took place after they had received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So it might seem like the church is kind of skipping ahead a bit and then talking about the resurrection of Jesus. But we're going to hear of the great work, especially of St. Peter, who did wonderful deeds in the name of Jesus after he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. You will hear at Mass today, when the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. Peter became bold when the Holy Spirit came, eh, friends? He continues, But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David said concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, For he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Peter goes on to say, I say to you, fellow Israelites, that because he knew that God was present, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and that all of us are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. Friends, this season draws us to see and hear, to see the glory of God, to hear his voice, and to feel his presence. Each day as we enter the church, we will see the beautiful Easter candle lit, reminding us of that presence of God. The candle and its beauty burns brightly at the base of the altar in some capacity, wherever it is placed on the sanctuary. The beautiful Easter candle that shines brightly, the beautiful flame a flame that reminds us of the faith that Jesus passed down to his 12 apostles, down through the generations, is that solid foundation, the rock on which we stand. Christ is the foundation of our lives. He is the rock that sustains us. He is the one who helps us to overcome all obstacles forever present in our midst. Mary Magdalene believed in this. Our Blessed Mother believed in this. The apostles came to believe in this, including our friend Thomas, who we'll hear about this coming Sunday. They all remind us of our need to deepen our faith too. We need to be resurrection people. So how has Lent 2023 helped 
to form us to where we are today, to where you are today. As we have been reading and studying the beautiful work by Bishop Barron called The Paschal Mystery, to which if you're not a parishioner of mine, I encourage you to read that beautiful book by Bishop Barron. It helps us to really understand the importance of this season, the importance of our belief that Jesus is truly risen. And if risen, then the gates of heaven are unlocked and the joy of heaven awaits each one of us. This is why we are to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, following in his teachings. This is why we are to be aware of what I say and do, because I don't want anything to stop me from entering into that joy that we celebrate in this season, which will eventually be our eternity. Presence with God. If you like what you hear, eternal please joy. consider supporting us using Jesus any of our is risen. links in Alleluia, the description below Alleluia. via Buzzsprout, Ko-Fi, May the words of St. Peter inspire us. Thanks, and God bless. May the witness of Mary Magdalene inspire us. And may the risen Christ bring you his peace and joy on this Easter Monday. Happy Easter, everyone. For God's playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I.